Hi, welcome back. In the previous session, we were looking at DataSphere NTL concepts in detail. As part of data integration, we started with the uh, an overview on data ETL concepts and the ETL objects, remote tables, data flows, and replication flows. In my previous session, uh, we looked at uh, creating remote tables in DataSphere, ob DataSphere system, and we replicated uh, those remote tables as snapshot and as well as real time in both uh, scenarios were explained in the system. In this session, so we're going to look at creating replication flows in data sphere system. And then uh, we will cover the, uh, the main use case of replication flows to, to inbound to get the data into data sphere and, and then uh, we apply the transformations on top of the inbound or staged tables you, uh, that are created as part of replication flows. Let's switch to the system and then start creating uh, replication flows um, in their sphere. So got the folder that we have um, created for this, uh, for this work. And I have the replication flows folder. And then I'm going to start creating a new replication flow. Start it, you can do it from plus or I can actually click on this re replication flow and then start creating it. Both should work fine. So creating a replication flow here. So in this window, you can see source connection and you can see the target connection. So I'm going to choose a source connection. So you can see there are certain connections that are available and not all the connections that, that you've seen for remote tables are he here. Uh, applicable here. The reason for, for this is the connections um, set with certain types allow replication flows uh, and certain types allow remote tables. Not all types of connections allow both replication flows and remote tables. It depends on the connector and the type that we use uh, make, makes a difference. So, uh, the one observation that you can notice I, here, I don't have S4 HANA cloud system available. The reason for it is if you uh, can recollect from the previous session, S4 HANA cloud um, that only giving above CDS views as the source ex, uh, exposed do not have a, a dedicated connection when it was created. It was created as cloud integration connection type. So we're going to understand these connection types in detail in another uh, uh, session on con connections uh, explicitly. But uh, just now I wanted to um, explain why do we see only certain connections of our rep replication flow. So you can understand that there's a dedicated connection for S4 HANA Cloud uh, introduced recently, um, which is not the case in this demo trial system. So and I. I can try to create a new connection, but I wouldn't have the parameters that were used for us for HANA public cloud. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to modify this connection to see what was uh, given for the existing connection. This is a pre-designed um, or pre-developed content that we can use for uh, connections. If you wanted to create, you can create a new one, but you we must know the credentials of the source system and also have the DPAs and details to know to, to, to be able to connect, to be able to create a new connection. So we're not going to do that. So we're going to use for this learning purpose, we're going to use one of the existing connections and then start creating the objects. So let's start with, uh, since we have started with S4 HANA for remote tables, for replication flows, I will uh, start with HANA Cloud. So I'm going to select HANA Cloud as a source and it is switching on the source container and then I go and select the container. Container is an HDI container or schema that if you're familiar with the Neta, native HANA database concepts. You can see these are all the different containers or schemas. I'm going to pick one. I will choose uh, a HD uh, demo, or I can actually go to the S flight schema and then select it. And then the next uh, button I have got here, add source object. What are the tables that I wanted to uh, add to my replication flow? I can add multiple objects uh, in a replication flow so that it gets replicated all the tables once. Uh, for now, 
I'm going to pick a couple of tables, which is going to be airport and then, uh, or actually I will, I'll keep car, carrier. So I selected both and then add selection. So these two objects are, are uh, become available now. So we got the source and then I'm going to create the target connection. Click on the connection. Uh, I'm not creating a connection. I'm just selecting the connection, what, what was there. So you can see there are a uh, few uh, options. The, if you are using this um, replication flow as a pass through, you can use these target systems and from HANA Cloud, you extract the data and transfer the data to this target application. But my use case is not uh, a pass through use case. As I said, in this example, my use case is um, inbound data movement, which means I connect to your source system and get the data into my data sphere local table, which is going to be staging table. Um, with that, I'm going to select uh, my target as data sphere. Selected the data sphere as a target, and it proposes the source object names as the target object names. Just, uh, you can change the name by selecting, rename the data target object, but I'm not doing it. I'm fine with this one. Or even I can choose another target object from data sphere system uh, with the map to existing target object. Since I don't have any existing target object, target object in data sphere, I'm ignoring these two options. I can also do the projections here. So by going into a detail, I have an option to choose. Uh, I have an option to choose the uh, projection. Projection is you can unmap some of the fields from source to target, or you can also add a filters, uh, like uh, a filters on certain column. Right now, I'm not doing a, a both. I'm just going to ignore it, and then leave the projection node. Um, uh, as it is. Now, I have an option to capture the delta, initial only and initial and delta. Right now, I'm going to choose initial only. Uh, this is going to uh, make the data load. Uh, so the target table enabled for initial load only. It's not going to start capturing the deltas. Going, uh, uh, It's not from the source perspective though. The source perspective, we're going to see in the schedule, not this delta or initial is basically uh, applying on the um, on the target table. So if I say truncate, it is going to truncate the data, existing data, and apply an in, uh, another initial load or full load. I'll, I'll I'll leave this as a truncate and initial only. I'm going to uh, close this detail and saving it. I'm going to give a name to it. I can say. Uh, replication flow for inbound. I will call as uh, one. I'll place this in the replication flows folder. And I am um, uh, now good to deploy this one. Let's deploy. Once it is deployed, it is good. Uh, it's activated and good for running. So I can start running this object from Okay, this is saying it's not deployed, wait for deployment. It's triggered, but not completed yet. So once it is completed, I can start doing the, I can do the run. When it is running, when the replication flow is running, I can see the uh, monitor uh, of the job in data integration monitor. So data integration monitor is a one place where uh, we can see the mo data load monitoring for Local tables, replication flows, transfer, all objects uh, can be monitored in data integration monitor. This has been deployed now. I'm going to click on running. Click on run. So you can see this run uh, status appearing here. It's asking to, uh, it's going to be one time run or multiple time, multiple runs. So I'm going to say create a schedule. Uh, I will say, uh, it's a, entered as a simple schedule, and then just um, for now, uh, I will keep it as daily. And then start date is going to be 10. And then that starts with 1037 is my today's date, and it's going to start immediately. Okay, and then start create. Schedule created. 
and I can check the schedule right here, the monitor symbol. So the schedule uh, started and it loaded two um, tables. And then I'm going to see uh, the, the monitor, um, uh, the monitor uh, area. I, I'm going to open another uh, window for doing the switching to the monitor so that I don't lose my current uh, transaction or current page. So I'm in data integration monitor. I uh, I'm going into the local tables and see whether my new tables were created in this. Yes, I have my new tables created. Car and airport, carrier and airport. I have uh, 53 and 24 records got loaded in here. And I can also monitor the flows from data flows monitor. This is the uh, RF inbound one is my replication flow and it is scheduled to run every day. You can also change the schedule to run it um, every five minutes or every one minute. Uh, if you keep zero, then it means it's kind of real time. So the schedule setting will let you uh, decide on what frequency it has to um, run. So this is what uh, you, you are able to see daily and hourly and minutes. So you select minutes and say zero minutes, it's going to run every every few seconds. That's the, uh, that's the uh, configuration for edit schedule. You can also delete the schedule and recreate. So you change will be lost, I'm going to be okay. I, I currently keep this as daily ones. So this is how this data has been loaded into the staging table of data sphere using replication flows. Um, then I'm going to uh, see the next use case of doing an outbound data flow from data sphere. So right now I have a table. Uh, I'm going to go into the back and then data flow builder or data builder, and then select a table that's already in here. Currently I have a table called outbound. I prepared this in, it has nothing, just two columns, uh, no data in it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this data uh, to another system, uh, which is going to be a premium outbound uh, as, as, as it's specified in use case two. But uh, if I have access to the target system schema, I would be able to uh, run and uh, create a replication flow and uh, move the data or outbound the data to the target. Let's create an object and see if I can do that. It's going to create a replication flow. This is for case two. So I'm going to put RF, um, select the source source connection. This time it is going to be data sphere. And then I have to select the uh, source object and can pick the source object from the list. I, this is my source object. And then I'm going to select the target system. So here I have the target systems called cloud storage. Any non-SAP, I wouldn't be able to do anything uh, here because of the license issue. This is a trial instance. I don't have premium license, premium outbound license. So I can only put the data into uh, HANA Cloud or HANA EDW. This time I'm going to choose uh, HANA Cloud since it's going to be another data warehouse, uh, so another cloud system. So I have that and then I need to select the container uh, that needs to go and this table get created. And if I don't have access, of course, I wouldn't be able to create anything. And let me try that. So it's going to be uh, more likely an access issue because I I don't have access to HANA Cloud at all. So I'm just using this. So outbound is the target. And then I can say RF outbound one. This is my second replication flow. It's created and then deploy it. It may get deployed, but when you run this, uh, it may have an it may have an issue uh, when creating the table di directly in the database because the communication user has to be uh, it's deployed has to have access on the um, target object. Yeah, all object properties are okay, and then. I can just do uh, like this and then start running it. 
run started, I can monitor the data load from, I don't have to schedule. I, I If I want it, I can schedule it, but it's just that I wanted to see how this is going running. Go into the monitor or you can go to the data integration monitor and you see that it's failed. So as most likely it, it is due to the insufficient privilege. So you, you got to give the uh, required access, uh, but I don't have access to that uh, HANA cloud database or system at all. So it's just read only for me. So that's when it got failed. Otherwise you would be able to create this table in the target database and also um, able to uh, load the data from data sphere into the into the HANA database. Uh, similarly, for other cloud storage uh, places like Google BigQuery and Amazon S3 bucket. This is another use case and use case three also very similar. Uh, instead of uh, the source is a data sphere staging table, the source will be directly your source system. So source and targets will be uh, connected systems and then we don't store any data in data sphere for the three. And anyway, I can connect to the source by target as I, I, even though I create a new replication flow, I wouldn't be able to uh, store or stage the data in the target table because of an insufficient authorization I have with. So pass through, outbound and inbound. We have seen these three uh, types of uh, replication flows or three use cases in the replication flows uh, in system. In the next session, I'm going to focus on creating transformation flows. Transformation flows are used for complex transformations, complex logic to be implemented in, uh, in data sphere along with the replication flow. Replication flow is just to get the data staged. And from there we focus or we implement trans transformation flows to get the data transformed using graphical or SQL, uh, both options we have to to do this. And as I said before, uh, every capability or almost all pipeline capabilities and machine learning capabilities or Python capabilities of uh, data intelligence service on cloud or data intelligence on on-premise, both uh, and those, uh, all the capabilities will be made available in data sphere using replication flow and transformation flow together. So that that's why it becomes the most important objects in the data sphere system. That's all I'm going to stop here and then we connect in the next session that's going to be on uh, transformation flow along with replication flow. Thank you, bye for now.